Howdy ho, fellow sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriating the Culture. On today's issue, we revisit our recurring bit on hot topics. Hot topic. By discussing vaccination, more specifically the COVID-19 vaccine. So bid farewell to your conspiracies, stick this in your arm, and let's get flagged by Facebook. I'm Pastor Shane. I'll be your inoculator today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> Opinions on vaccination has become a lot like driving, where everyone who drives slower than you is a moron and everyone who drives faster is a maniac. And the same is true in Christian circles. I read an article this past week from David French entitled, It's Time to Stop Rationalizing and Enabling Evangelical Vaccine Rejection. The basic gist of it is, unless you get vaccinated, you're a bad Christian. He says, It is clear that much, though certainly not all, of our remaining refusal problem is not one of information formation, but one of moral formation itself. And David French is going to help us with our moral formation. To do that, he quotes Martin Luther during the plague. Therefore, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance infect and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me and I have done what he has expected of me and so I am not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid place or person, but will go freely as stated above. See, this is such a God-fearing faith because it is neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. And that quote is an excerpt from Martin Luther's essay on the Jews and their lies. Just kidding. And I do like the quote, but my point is, our moral formation is based on scripture. It's not based on Martin Luther. Ironically, that's sort of the whole point of sola scriptura. And when it comes to scripture, French doesn't cite any, uh, save one. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Ah, so don't fear the virus. Wait. Okay, so that verse isn't particularly helpful. Now, it's not surprising that French doesn't cite scripture because nowhere in the Bible does the Bible command us to get the COVID vaccine. And nowhere in the Bible does it command us not to get the vaccine. The Bible says absolutely nothing about it. It is not explicit on this point, which means we have to look at the biblical principles, interpret it, and then apply it to our present circumstances. And you could certainly point to biblical principles like uh, loving your neighbor or knowing the good you ought to do and doing it, and therefore conclude that the right thing for you to do as a Christian is to get vaccinated. But areas where the Bible is silent, areas where the Bible is not explicit, is definitionally a gray area. And the Bible does give explicit instruction in regards to gray areas. Romans 14 is pretty helpful here. Except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master or servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. As we said in our episode on judgment, Christians are to judge one another in regards to sin, but not in regards to disputable matters. And gray areas are, of course, disputable matters. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't try to convince one another. Uh, the Apostle Paul reasoned from his position and thought that his stance was correct. Verse 14, I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. Uh, Paul was probably right. David French could be right. But even if he is, Christians are not called to violate our consciences. 
It says in verse 5, One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. And then he says, So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat, because their eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. It doesn't matter whether your theology is precisely correct or not. If anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person, it is unclean. If you regard it as wrong, then it is wrong for you. Don't violate your conscience. That's a biblical mandate. Or as Martin Luther once said, peace be upon him, to act against conscience is neither right nor safe. Now, David French seems to think that Christian conscience is not really being sincerely violated. He says, The majority of Christians seeking religious exemptions are using religion as a mere pretext for their real concern, be it fear of the shot or the simple desire to do what they want. I have no idea how he knows that, and the only data that he points to is a dubious poll from NBC News. And I say dubious because it contradicts the data coming from the CDZ. So for instance, in this poll, 66% of whites are vaccinated, while 76% of blacks are vaccinated, and 71% of Latinos are vaccinated. That's not even remotely close to the actual CDC data, which does break down by demographics on who's vaccinated. And why is white evangelicals a category? And how come non-white evangelicals aren't on the list? The poll doesn't match up with the actual CDC data, and the categories are suspect. So if you believe this poll, you might be a David French. Now, of course, it does seem that there are naturally a contingent of evangelicals who are vaccine hesitant. But the reasons are probably not uniform. Some portion of evangelicals don't want to get the vaccine because they already got the virus. And there's conflicting data when it comes to natural immunity. Uh, Some studies show that natural immunity is as good or even better than the vaccine. Other studies say, no, it isn't. Okay, but is it unreasonable that a sincere evangelical Christian could conclude, I had COVID, I have natural immunity, which is just like being vaccinated, so I'm not likely to get it and I'm not likely to transmit it? Is that really unreasonable? And is that belief really a sign of moral malformation? That seems uncharitable, particularly when it's not as if vaccination carries zero risk. Now, to be clear, these examples are very, 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 very rare. But for instance, a woman in New Zealand died after getting the COVID vaccine due to an inflammation of the heart, which sometimes can happen. Or two men died after receiving a contaminated batch of vaccines. Things happen. There's no such thing as zero risk. I think the vaccines are perfectly safe. But can I understand why someone who already had the virus doesn't want to get the vaccine? Sure. And I'm not convinced that it makes them bad Christians. Now, other Christians are vaccine hesitant for a little more colorful reasons in that they believe the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Now, maybe that's kooky and a little bit crazy, but when you look at the past year and see COVID being used to shut down churches, to fine churches, to target churches and arrest pastors, you might start thinking of COVID in spiritual warfare terms. And then all of a sudden, you have vaccine passports in places like New York, where you need proof of vaccination just to enter a restaurant. And vaccine passports have broken out across the globe. Israel and European nations, Japan is planning on it. Australia is probably the most dystopian. The Atlantic describes what's happening down under this way. The government of South Australia, one of the country's six states, developed and is now testing an app as Aurelian as any in the free world to enforce its quarantine rules. People in South Australia will be forced to download an app that combines facial recognition and geolocation. The state will text them at random times, and thereafter they will have 15 minutes to take a picture of their face in the location where they are supposed to be. Should they fail, the local police department will be sent to follow up in person. Okay. Now, when it comes down to it, do I really think that the vaccine is the mark of the beast? No. 
But that also doesn't mean that vaccine mandates and vaccine passports don't make me queasy. They kind of do. They stir something in my soul that makes me uncomfortable. And I can understand why it might make other Christians uncomfortable or why it might even violate their conscience. Maybe this issue is a little more nuanced and complex. Now, David French is correct when he says there are limitations to our liberty, but the notion that a loss of liberty has no bearing on religious liberty is absurd on its face. Is this an issue of dire importance that it requires and necessitates a loss of liberty? Are there ramifications to that? Health and safety is a public good. Liberty and personal autonomy is a public good. And Christians in good faith can disagree on where the balance should be. But it gets even more complicated because Christianity isn't simply about what you do, but why you do it. You can righteously get the vaccine. You know, I want to protect myself. I want to protect my neighbors. I want to help make sure the hospitals aren't overwhelmed. I think it's the right thing to do. I'm getting it. Great. But you can unrighteously get the vaccine too, where it's not altruistic in the slightest, but motivated by fear or paranoia or selfishness or pride or self-righteousness. You know, I got the vaccine because I'm one of the good ones. You know, I'm smarter and better, and I got, I got to let everyone know on Facebook that I got vaxxed because I'm so virtuous. You know, not like those unvaxxed Christians. If that's where your heart is, uh, you got to be warned. Jesus had certain things to say about that, and it wasn't good. Now, you can also righteously be unvaxxed, and I think we already demonstrated what that might look like. It would violate your conscience. Uh, but you can also unrighteously be unvaxxed. And David French, I think, does a good job of pointing us to that, where there's this conflation of Christianity and American libertarianism, where nobody tells me what to do. But personal autonomy is not the highest virtue of Christianity. There's freedom in Christ, but we're also slaves to Christ. We're not independent. We're completely and totally dependent on Christ for everything. That's Christianity. And there's a kind of perversion of Christianity and jingoism that many Americans need to guard against. So I think when it comes to this issue, we need to examine our hearts. You can righteously get the vaccine. You can unrighteously get the vaccine. You can righteously not get the vaccine. You can unrighteously not get the vaccine. Examine your heart and prayerfully consider why we make the decisions that we make. And let's be gracious with one another, you know, loving, patient, understanding. Recognize that the Bible is not explicit on this topic, so it requires interpretation. So let's be gracious. Who are you to judge another man's servant? Do your research, be informed, properly weigh the risks, be convinced in your own mind, and don't violate your conscience. Well, we'll stop there for today. As always, you can hit me up on the major socials, rate, review, subscribe, leave me questions and comments, and I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. <laughs>